Um, we're really thrilled to have Dana Zen here today. Uh, Dana is the Associate Director with OII USA. OII is the Organization Intersex International, and OII USA is the United States branch of that. Um, we also have Haley Gorenberg, who is part of a team with Lambda Legal. Uh, Haley Gorenberg is the Deputy Legal Director and uh, worked with Dana on a case that was announced on Intersex Day of Awareness last year, October 26, 2015. Um, I think we're going to start our discussion today um, very shortly. I also want to give special thanks to If When How, Lawyering for Reproductive Justice, uh, which is one of the student groups here at the law school co-sponsoring this program today. Um, they've been an amazing resource in terms of developing programming focused on different issues of gender, sexuality, and reproductive rights, as well as to thank uh, QTPOC, QTPOC, which is queer and trans people of color here at Columbia Law School. Um, in terms of doing really wonderful work at the intersections of racial justice, uh, LGBTQ rights, and particularly looking out for folks that are most marginalized in LGBTQ communities. Um, they're doing amazing work, and so I really just want to express gratitude to them. Um, again, so grateful that we have uh, Dana and Haley here today. I think the discussion will start with um, I'll invite Dana to introduce themselves a bit more and speak a bit about uh, their coming to activism, to working with OII USA, and um, some of their early cases and the case they brought with Lambda last year. And then um, I invite Haley to speak a bit about some of the legal precedents that uh, have been used in Dana's case, uh, as well as what some of the legal implications moving forward for further cases are. Uh, we also hope to have uh, open Q&A following the remarks by our speakers. Um, I'll be stepping around with a microphone. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Um, we do have people filming the room, but they will not be filming the audience. If you have any questions or concerns about this, please reach out to me. I'm happy to um, you know, speak with you regarding any concerns you have. Or if you have a question you would not like it to be audio recorded, please let me know. Um, Thank you again all for coming, and please enjoy the event. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Thank you, Liz, for having me. Uh, thank you, Columbia Law, uh, and all the student organizations who had me come here. This is a uh, I'll bet a long journey. Uh, my, my journey to this point uh, started back in uh, probably around 2008 when. Oh, I'm that on. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> that'll help. Uh, my journey basically started about 2008 when I started getting angry about realizing intersex dental mutilation was still happening. I knew it happened to me, and the more I read about the history of going on um, in this country and around the world, for that matter, of what happens to hermaphrodites, intersex people, um, just kind of start, continue to shake me to the core, and I had to figure out what I could do because it looked like really, other than a few books out there, a few uh, people talking that, oh yeah, there's an issue, nobody was really doing anything. So I thought about what I could do. Uh, I think, I'm going to paraphrase here because I don't know the exact quote, I think uh, it was Martin Luther King or somebody like that who said something, if not me, who. Um, so I said, oh, yeah, I got to do something. So I thought long and hard, and I, I was thinking, what is it, what is it? And I'm going to realize that if we're not written into the law, we don't exist, and the law is going to beat against us. 
the same thing happened, uh, the same reasons that happened with the Civil Rights Movement. If African Americans, black people in this country were not recognized, the laws were working against them. So I said I need to get some kind of legal recognition. So in the state of Colorado where I live, I uh, filed to change my driver's license to include the I on it instead of the male or female that, that they, they allow. And I lost that case on a technicality. I think, I don't know what the case is called, Zim versus the State uh, Department of Revenue or something like that, uh, Colorado Department of Revenue. But I filed through uh, the Department of uh, Regulatory Agencies. Well, I lost that case, uh, like I said, on a technicality, but um, the appeals process kind of got screwed up because when they sent me the letter saying I lost the case, I have so much time to appeal, I was homeless and it took a long time for that letter to catch up with me. And I didn't have, to, I, I didn't get it until after the appeal process. And I have a lot of mental health problems and uh, brain injury and things like that. And I wasn't prepared to challenge that at the time. But when I was down in Florida helping my dad, who was ill at the time, I had the opportunity to talk to a professor from uh, Stetson Law University who was uh, volunteering his time at uh, Stand Down at the um, um, Bay Pines VA mental, uh, Medical Hospital. Um, which helps uh, low-income and homeless veterans. And I picked his brain for a couple of, a couple of hours, I think it was. Um, and he kind of outlined a process for me to get the United States Census Bureau to kind of count the number of intersex people in the, in the country. And while that was very helpful, and, and I kind of used that process uh, I was I wanted to be a little more direct, so I chose making sure I had everything in line for uh, a passport, which is different from the uh, the outline that he he talked about. Because I just let him figure that out for me, and I just asked a ton of questions. Um, I'm very grateful. I can't remember his name. It's one of the cool things about the brain injury. And I had his card, but being homeless, most of that stuff kind of got lost. But I am very grateful to him. So when I got back, uh, when I was in back, when I got back to um, Colorado, I uh, looked. Uh, I got all those ducks in a row, and I was sitting on that. Uh, uh, the VA helped me with the process of uh, finding a place to live. And I saved a little bit of money. There was a conference in, in Boulder, Colorado called, uh, if I can remember that, what it was, it was uh, a general uh, autonomy conference, uh, international conference uh, against basically circumcision of, of men, but they also included a little bit of uh, intersex in their conference. And Keto Valoria, who is the executive director of Organization Intersex International USA, uh, who I have known on Facebook for a number of years, uh, was going to be speaking. And so I went to the conference and we met, we talked. She asked me to be the regional director uh, of the organization. And then she asked me to go to Mexico City for the uh, order, uh, International Gay and Lesbian uh, uh, Association World Conference 
as a representative for OII USA, and the vote for an uh, intersex secretariat. And I said, sure, I'll try. I don't think I'll get a passport. I have everything in process, ready to go, but there's going to be an issue with the passport agency. But I have everything ready. I have uh, my, uh, all the documents, birth certificate, letters from my doctor saying I'm intersex and all that fun stuff. And so I tried. I got turned down twice. I filled out their, I had my doctors fill out uh, their documentation for the behalf of trans people, which says under the penalty of perjury, I do certify that this person is. Uh, I had a couple different doctors do that for me. 